Hello everyone, my name is Tom and welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yo, yo, yo. Studio audience, you got calm down. They can't hear me. Jesus Christ. Can't believe they doing that, bro. That's crazy, bro. Okay, anyways, welcome everyone to the Late Night Sugma program. My name is Tom. I'm the Sugma Male. I'm your host for this evening. And tonight, we have a very big show. We have the man, the myth, the legend, the boy, the Spider-Man, the the guy from that one movie, the, the guy who played... We'll see, dude. We got Tom Holland tonight. We got Tom Holland tonight. Can I see some... uh? Some some action in the chat for Tom Holland. No, no, guys. Come on, guys, please. Guys, guys. Guys, I want him to like me, bro. Come on. <laughs> Listen, we all know I've only ever said very positive things about Tom Holland on this broadcast ever in my life, actually. I've only ever said very positive things about Tom Holland. I've never sent, said a negative thing about Tom Holland in my life. Like, why would I say that, bro? Like, I mean, we're both named Tom. You know, why would I ever say... <laughs> Anything negative about him. What are we even doing? Oh, yeah. Right. So, uh, last week, the bell went off. And, uh, I never spun the wheel. So, we have to do that. Like, right off the bat, we have to do that. I owe y'all a wheel spin. Why is my hair, bro, why is, why is the shadow making it look like my bald, my male pattern baldness is worse than it actually is? It's not that bad. Is it? I don't care. Whatever. It that's irrelevant to what we're doing. We need to fuck, I need to I need, I need the, the music. We need music. We need the what did I pull up last week? Is this it? You know what, bro? Fuck it, bro. The show must go on. This is way more horny than what I was looking for. Also, goddamn, that was loud. That is way more horny than what I was looking for, but you know what? Fuck it, dude. We're we're just gonna have to deal with it. We're just gonna have to deal with it. Okay. We're going horny on the wheel, I guess. Oh boy. Okay. Let's spin it. Let's let's see what we get. Oh, I meant to mute that. Oh shit, it's gonna be loud as fuck. Hold up. Mute tap. Saved it. Saved it. Now where are we getting? Number three. Please tell me this one's not gonna gonna hurt me for the rest of the let's see a hundred overhead dumbbell all right okay that one won't be as bad i think a hundred overhead dumbbell press i feel like that won't be bad because i got two arms technically it'll only be 50 per arm that's not that bad right i didn't I didn't uh, hype myself up as much for uh, this show because I was like, you know, wait, I have to take off my whole shirt to do. OK, you know what? Actually, we're just not going to do that because I'm not wearing a shirt necessary for that. Let's just reroll. Let's just reroll. <laughs> Let's just reroll. Let's just do another one. And we got number 16. What is number 16? Take 10 chops. Bro, that's gonna... Okay. Alright, so I gotta chop myself 10 times. Across the chest, I guess. Is this kind of self-harm? Nah, it's fine. It's probably fine. That's very low. Bro, I'm just like... I, I'm winging it this week. I was like, you know what? We got Tom Holland. It's fine. We got Tomothy Holland. All right. Let's go. Let's go. All right. And yes, I did only... I only dressed for above the waist. I'm sorry, y'all. All right. Okay. Okay, one. I feel like that's not communicated. I'm just gonna no-sell that. Did it hurt? Yes. Was it that bad? I think it's better than take. I think I think that's less self harm. I think that's less self harm than doing the uh, hundred squats. If I'm being honest, Did I even like hold up. 
I mean, you can't even tell. Like, it's not even... I don't know. Maybe I pussied out. Maybe I didn't chop myself hard enough. I mean, it felt like I did. I don't know, bro. I'm sorry. I got no energy this week. I got no energy. I'm I'm trying, bro. Let's talk about the Oscars. Y'all want to talk about the Oscars? Let's just pull up my timeline or my my profile from that, because I was given all sorts of hot takes. All right, let, let's let's watch the the event that transpired. Did I not click play? What, bro? Wow. wow. Wait. Will Smith just smacked the shit out of me. It didn't even show a slap. Oh, there we go. Wow. Will Smith just smacked the shit out of me. Can y'all hear that? Wow, dude. Bro, it's not even anyone here right now, bro. It's not even anyone. Bro, what am I? What? Bro, what am I doing right now? Like, what am I doing, homie? What am I? What? What? What is this, bro? I'm just sitting here chopping myself on camera for what, bro? This is it. This is my Joker arc, bro. I'm about to go Will Smith. <laughs> All right. Anyways, okay. So like, whatever. Will Smith slapped the shit out of Chris Rock. And I'm going to be honest. I don't give a fuck. A lot of people are talking about like, oh my god, this is condoning violence. I don't think so. I don't think that's what this is. Some sources are claiming that Will Smith punched Chris Rock. Now, I think that is a bad faith interpretation of what happened. Because an open hand slap is very different from a closed fist punch. One intends to do harm. One is a slap across the face. I do not care about a slap across the face. And I'm going to be honest. As someone who has been making jokes my entire life. Someone who sees themselves as a comedian. In some shape or form. I, I honestly think that if you're not willing to get slapped for a joke. You shouldn't be saying it. Like listen. Do you think I haven't made people upset with jokes I've made. Throughout my lifetime. Do you think that that hasn't happened. Do you think that the. The, the, the logo is moving right now because it's not. It's not. That that's I'm not gaslighting you by saying it's not. It's just it's not. You didn't see anything. Y'all saw nothing. But listen, you, you think that like people haven't been upset enough that like they're like if I'm gonna tell a joke, I'm telling a joke that I know for a fact is hilarious. If it's not hilarious to the people around me, it's hilarious enough to me. If I get slapped across the face, oh well. Like, and listen, like, a slap across the face is just that. Alright, let's spin the wheel again. Alright, let's just use... Alright, whatever. Let's just do another one. Fuck it, bro. Who's at me, bro? Why am I getting Discord notifications? We're doing number 12. What's number 12? Convince everyone Bush shit 9-11. Alright, listen, uh... Listen, y'all. George W. Bush, all I'm gonna say is... Steel beams melted by jet fuel? Do you really believe that? Do you really believe the government when they say that's, that, that's what happened? You know? I mean, Osama himself was like, yo, dude, we didn't expect the towers to fall. Do you maybe think like, yo, I'm just using my platform right now to peddle misinformation? Well, we got one viewer in here, so can Twitch really stop me? That one viewer is a Twitch, a Twitch staff member that is here to see that I'm impressing onto nobody the false information that uh, 9/11 was an inside job. That's just what's happening right now. That's just what my life is, bro. Like honestly, dude, what what are we doing right now? What are we doing right now? What we should be doing is getting slapped across the, the face for jokes we're making, bro. And honestly, dude, if I'm not making a joke, at least one joke tonight that I think is worth getting slapped across the face for, cancel the show. Cancel me and cancel the show. You know, I remember one time when I was in high school, there was a uh, a guy I knew. I wasn't necessarily friends with him directly, but he was friends with friends. He, he was friends with my friends. So I knew him through that avenue. And uh, 
you know, he was in that stage of his life in which you are starting to figure out who you are. You're kind of starting to rebel against the person you once were. And I, for that kind of reason, I kind of grew apart from him because I was kind of friends with him at some point. But like, I don't know, he just started being a, a, an idiot. And I was like, whatever, bro. Because like at a certain point, a lot of guys, a lot of people in general, not just guys, women do it too, where they just start to care a lot about the external, the external pressures of society. They're like, yo, you got to do this. You got to do that. You know, you got to prove your value through these uh, exterior things. And I was in the marching band. Proudly. I'm a band geek. Proudly. I'm a proud band geek. I played the saxophone. I played the saxophone so well, you would have thought I was getting pussy back then when I was not. There was not a pussy in my vicinity. Well, actually, that's not true, but look, let's not talk about that. <laughs> My point is, is I was, you know, I was silent, I was profiling, and I made jokes that I thought were funny. And especially about dudes like that, because at the time, I didn't have the foresight to look back and be like, oh, you know, that's just like a thing. You know, like, that's a thing. Like, you, you get to a certain age, and then, of course, you're gonna start to feel certain pressures, and I'm not better than anybody else because I didn't give in to those pressures. But... Maybe back then I did. <laughs> so, there was a football game. I was in the stands as a member of the marching band. And I saw this dude in question. He walked up, and you could tell he was proud of himself. Because he had a girl on his arm. He got a girlfriend from another school, and he was like, yo, she's real. He was showing up with her on his arm, and he was like, yeah, she's real. And I noticed something about this girl. I noticed something about this girl, and he came over to uh, my friends who were next to me, because, like, you know, he had to, because, like, we're in the marching band, so, like, we have to kind of stick to, like, a certain area for most of the game, because that's just what they do. Like, you're, you're required to go to every football game. I probably wouldn't have gone to very many football games if I wasn't required to, but I was required to go to every single one because I was in the band. He came over by himself to talk to some of my friends who he was friends with. And I said to him, Yo! Is that your girlfriend? And he was like, yeah. I was like, why does she look like your sister? <laughs> and he was like, huh? I was like, why do you guys look like you're related? You you look exactly alike. She looks like the female version of you. And he was like, no, she doesn't. And then my friends were like, yeah, she kind of does. <laughs> and he was like, no, she fuck. And he started getting mad at me. And that's an example where I knew that was going to happen. I knew, of course, if you go up to someone and you're like, yo, your sis, your, your girlfriend kind of looks like your sister, they're probably going to get mad at you. And it's going to be funny. <laughs> so you say it anyways. And if you get slapped across, I didn't get slapped across the face in that circumstance. But if you do, if I did, it would have been worth it. That's what I'm saying. I think it was funny enough, to me at least, <laughs> to be like, yo, dude, why your girlfriend look like your sister? I thought that was funny enough to get slapped across the face for. And I think that Chris Rock, a lot of people, here's the thing, a lot of people are turning this whole Will Smith slapping Chris Rock across the face thing into like, oh my god, comedians can't make jokes anymore. No, y'all have been inside for like two years straight, y'all don't know how to talk to anybody anymore. You don't, you do not know how to talk to people face to face anymore. You are used to saying shit that you usually wouldn't say, because you have changed over the last two years into an entirely new person, all of us have, I'm not the person I was before, in any sense. And because there was no incentive to kind of, you know, filter yourself a little bit more and not get slapped across the face, a lot of us are talking like we're about to get slapped. I mean, I've always talked like that, to be honest, when I'm not being a quiet person, because I am a quiet person. But when I'm not being that, I'm saying shit that's going to get in, get me in trouble. Like, I, I just am. Like, that's just what happens. Like, if I'm saying shit that's going to get me in trouble, it's because I think it's funny. But here's the thing, if Chris Rock is a real comedian, he knows that whatever he was saying was worth getting slapped across the face for. That's all I'm saying. If it was worth getting slapped across the face for, that means it was probably funny. And the thing is, is if you're not ready, if you're not prepared for that, then maybe you shouldn't be in comedy. Like, that's the thing. It's like, dude, I feel like comedy has become such an entitled area of, like, entertainment. It's so interesting. 
How comedians will claim that everyone is too sensitive. Claim that this generation is full of snowflakes. And yet, they're constantly showing that they're some of the most sensitive people. You know, there's a big crossover between comedy and wrestling. A lot of wrestling fans are friends with comedians. A lot of comedians are fans of pro wrestling and friends with pro wrestlers. And I think it's because the two mediums are pretty similar. You know, stand-up comedy and professional wrestling are both mediums of entertainment that are based on immediate feedback and having to kind of improvise on the spot to adjust the uh, adjust the reaction you're getting. Which is why it'd be great if I had an active chat. But when I was in pro wrestling, when I was in that, that business, I was always told to be careful what I say because pro wrestlers are some of the most sensitive people in the world. And I think the true that it's both true for pro wrestlers and for comedians. I think comedians are also incredibly sensitive people. Okay, my point is, my point ultimately is, if you're going to make jokes, you have to be willing to take jokes. And you got to understand that if you're one of those people who's like, yo, jokes are supposed to be kind of offensive. Jokes are meant to push boundaries and be a little bit on the edge. You got to be able to deal with the consequences of that. Like comedians should not and are not and should not be a protected class. Like, what entitles you to protection from the consequences of what you say just because you're like, well, it was a joke. That's the equivalent of doing whatever awful thing you want and being like, it was just a, pl a prank, bro. It was just a prank, bro. Like, why are you freaking out? Why are you upset that I ran over your kid? It was a prank. Like, you can't just say it was a, it was a prank and you can't just say it was a joke. Even if it was a joke. You still have to deal with the consequences of that joke. Like, the reason why you pull a prank on someone is for the reaction. The reason why you tell a joke is for the reaction. And if you're going for that edginess, you gotta recognize that sometimes you're gonna overstep. You can't be like, oh my god, like, I need to be a protected class because I'm telling jokes and I'm a comedian. No, dude, like, come on. Like, you need to be able... Like, that's part of the, the, being a comedian is being willing to face the consequences of what you say. Like, that's, ha that's got to be part of it. And sometimes you're going to get slapped across the face by Will Smith. And a lot of people are like, oh my god, dude, we're condoning violence now. This is like normalizing violence, bro. We live in a fucking country where we go across the nation. We go across the, the fucking sea. We go to f countries that are much less wealthy than we are. And we bomb the fuck out of them. We kill civilians there. And we say it's because we need to protect our freedom. And yet we're going to look to our citizens. And when they, when one of them open hand slaps another one across the face. Not not punching across, not punching in the face. Do not. I'm tired of that narrative. Because there's a big difference. There's a big difference between an open hand slap and a punch. When someone open hand slaps the, another person. And we're making this big deal about it. We're like, oh my god, Will Smith needs to get back. His, bro, Will Smith doesn't need to do shit. Why is it that we are like, yo, Will Smith deserves consequences for his actions, but statements made by Chris Rock, he, he shouldn't have any consequences for? And here's the thing. I think Chris Rock understands this. I think he does. I think Chris Rock understands. If you tell a joke, you're going to get slapped across the face. Because if you are genuinely, like, unless he's just out of touch. But listen, bro. If you're not, bro, I was saying Bush did 9-11, like, not that long ago. <laughs> like, 10 minutes ago, I was saying Bush did 9-11. So, I don't know what to tell you, bro. If I'm not talking about animation, nobody gives a shit. Actually, you know what, fuck it, let's just, we're talking about the Oscars anyways, let's talk about animation real quick. Let's talk about, hell, you know, someone just <laughs> responded to a thing that, you know, let's, let's just, let's, let's, let's react to this, let's such a special place in our hearts because animated films make up some of our most formative movie experiences as kids so many kids watch these movies over and over and over and over and over and over and over <laughs> i see some parents out there know exactly what we're talking about so that was the uh introduction by the oscars to the animated film category and you might have noticed i mean i'm sure a lot of my viewers your timelines went insane because holy fuck they're being super disrespectful to the category and the medium 
of animation by basically saying the clear the the the, the sum, summarization that's not the correct word but I'm, it works the summarization of what was said being used by most of the people on animation twitter was animation is a medium for children for adults to endure and that was basically kind of the whole gist that people took away from it that was the sentiment that people took away was that animation is a medium for children which is of course a very commonly held opinion and adults just endure it adults don't watch animation even though they do <laughs> i mean fuck it big mouth invincible arcane a ton of anime like a whole lot of adult animation out here fucking uh Vivzy Pop, Hell the Boss, fucking uh, the big one that if I say on Twitter, I get. Fuck it, bro. You know what? Fuck it. <laughs> Fuck it. Dude, you know what? You know what, bro? Fuck it. Let's, let's get canceled right now. Let me just. Let me go off real quick. Let's say something inflammatory. The medium and industry. Of animation forward. Let's just let's start some shit, bro. Let's just start some shit, bro. Fuck it. I'm ready to get canceled. Fuck it, y'all. Fuck it. Let's just fuck it. Fuck it, bro. <laughs> let's just get canceled, dude. I'm ready, bro. I'm tired, bro. Let's uh, let's just. All right. Anyone who's in here, anyone who's watching this, go go like like and retweet that or engage with it. Call me an asshole if I if you disagree. I don't know. Fuck it, dude. But anyways, yeah, adults watch animation. Holy fuck, adults enjoy animation. Primal, another great example of adult animation. So, yeah, there's that. There's the, that whole thing. But the reason why, well, I mean the reason why people were upset about the whole, you know, that, that whole introduction is because people on animation Twitter, I'm going to be honest, can be kind of reactionary, can be kind of dramatic. That's just how it is. And I, I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but it is how it is, you know? I mean, sometimes it's a bad thing. But in this case, I don't know, it's kind of a neutral thing. But the real reason why, the more legitimate reason why a lot of people were upset about this and why I was kind of upset by it is, right about now, there's an initiative going on called a New Deal for Animation. That's not what I wanted to do. I'm struggling to grab this link real quick. This tweet sums it up pretty well. You know, considering the Academy's history as a tool for union busting, I wonder if this bit was written into the script to undercut the points the animation union is presently using in our ongoing contract negotiations that animated movies are the top viewed streaming content. Which is true. The idea behind this does seem to be to discredit and devalue animation as a medium as something that does not require as much skill, something that can afford to be lower quality, that might not be as important as other media. Like, oh my god, like these live action films, they're telling a story, they're holding a mirror up to society to say all these things, to uncover all these issues and provide commentary on them. Whereas animation, it's for kids to watch over and over again while, you know, parents sit idly by and just grit their teeth and deal with it that's kind of fucked up not fucked up because oh you you're just gonna under i mean whatever who cares at this point who cares about the whole you know animation is for kids whatever i don't care about that nearly as much as i care about the implication of animation being lowbrow and not being worth respect beyond that utility seeming to be a way to discredit the animation strikes and new deal for animation currently going on because there are so many adults who have dedicated their careers to stories in a medium that has infinite possibilities which is what animation is and these are stories that adults enjoy as well and you could chalk this whole thing up to the same old disrespect but it does feel especially violent and harmful when 
it is going on as the animation unions are trying to get better pay and get better benefits and basically just be treated as human beings. And you might think, well, is it really an issue? Like, or not even, not even that, you might not even know there's an issue. So let's, let's talk about that for a second. Did you know that writers for live action are paid almost double what animation writers are paid for the exact same job? That's not even mentioning storyboard artists who often write dialogue as well as directing the visuals of what you see on screen and often take on many more responsibilities over time. And they're constantly adding on to the job description of storyboard artists. I know storyboard artists that I see now on Twitter and on Discord and whatever they're saying like, bro, I didn't learn to do this job. And now it's like being included in my current job. Like I want to storyboard. And now I have to learn this new program. Now I have to to clean up work. I need to do all this other stuff that's not in my job description, and I'm not getting paid more to do it. And it reminds me a lot of when I was uh when I was working minimum wage in a deli, and the reason I quit was because I was making nine dollars an hour. And at first it was fine. It was like, okay, I come in, I slice the meat, I do this, I do that. But then I was like, oh well, can you train these new workers? And it's like, all right, cool, sure. Oh, can you also do this? Oh, also we're understaffed, so you're going to have to do two people's work. And I was like, hold on. Am I going to get a raise for us? No, we can't afford a raise. We can't afford to pay you more. Why do you think, like, you know, it's not even that we're understaffed because, like, we can't, you know, I mean, it was partly because they couldn't keep people, but it's also, like, we can't pay that many people per shift. And it's like, what the hell, dude? Like, I'm not going to do the same, I'm not going to get paid the same and get the same no benefits at that job to do the work of like two or three people like are you crazy and that's what they're doing to storyboard artists people who went to school who are professionals who know what they're doing and are now being told like well actually we don't want to pay someone to do this cleanup so you can do that also color designers can we talk about color designers for a second they're paid according to an outdated job description that leads to their job contributing more than they're being compensated for color designers are being paid according to like this job title of like ink and pen or something needless to say as animation has moved into the modern age with digital art and all this other stuff there's a lot more goes into colors and whatever that are just like the color design in general with uh, the digital medium or would digital medium be i mean I, yeah i guess that's technically correct because like you know it's like you know traditional art is one medium like you, you use coal for one medium like you know i guess that would count as a medium even though animation in itself is a medium but whatever i digress the point is color designers are being given a job description for someone that did a much smaller job before and that hasn't been updated so they're getting paid to do a job that was much less taxing or they're they're being paid to do the job that they're doing now but according to the rate of something that was much less taxing so it's basically just a way to underpay them and timing directors, timing directors, have you ever looked at an animation and been like, yo, this shit looks choppy as fuck, this shit doesn't look correct? It's something that you really appreciate when you see it done poorly, but you don't really appreciate when you always see it done well. And that's thanks to timing directors, because they're a vital part of the visual quality of animation. Hold up, let me move this window real quick. So let me tell you about timing directors. They are hired on as freelance workers. This is very similar to what WWE does with their wrestlers. The reason why WWE does this, even though it's like very much a scam, you're a contractor, you're a freelancer, but you can only work for them. I'm not sure if that's the same for uh, with animation, but that's how WWE does it. And the reason WWE does that is so they don't have to pay for health insurance, they don't have to pay for benefits for their wrestlers. That's basically what they're doing with timing directors. They're like, okay, we're going to have you work freelance, essentially. And the way that we're going to do this is since you're working freelance, we're going to give you salary pay. And then what they do is, you know, you're getting paid for 40 hours a week, and that's a fixed rate. But then they have them working 60 hours. They have them working overtime, and since they're on a fixed rate, they aren't getting paid overtime. And they also, since they're freelancers, aren't getting benefits, just like with this shit WWE pulls. And a big thing to remember, especially with why, why people were so sensitive to this Oscar thing, 
with the Oscar nominations being like, oh my god, like, you know, animation is for kids. It's just something kids watch over and over again. During the pandemic, animation was the one part of the entertainment industry that did not halt production. Their deadlines stayed the same. They kept working. Deadlines, workloads, and responsibilities were unchanged as they continued working from home in the middle of a worldwide pandemic. Now, even if it's like, well, technically, you know, it's much easier to work on animation from home than go to a studio and, you know, do a lot of other things from home. Sure, like, in a lot, a lot of the things from animation, or a lot of things in the entertainment industry, yeah, animation was the one where they could actually do stuff from home. But it doesn't mean that people in the animation industry were not dealing with the same mental fatigue and the same just stress that everyone else was in the beginning of the pandemic but they still had to work they still had the same responsibilities and sure they're getting paid but as we see from what i've been describing probably not as much as they deserve to and i care about animation I and mean, animation is how i've made my livelihood for the last five years it's how i've made any money basically <laughs> through these people's hard work i've been able to make money and I appreciate that. And it's something where I do it because I care about animation. I care about the industry and I care about the medium. And I want to see it respected. But also, I care a lot about workers being fairly treated and compensated for their, la for their labor. And that's another thing where that ties in. I want to see people who work in animation. I want to see my friends who work in animation get paid what they're worth. Because animation is a fucking miracle, dude. You're making pictures move. Like, bro, that's fucking witchcraft. You deserve to be fairly compensated for that. You deserve to be able to support yourself. You deserve to be making the money that you deserve for making that process happen. Even if it's not always perfect. The fact that you are good enough to be a part of an animated team. That's fucking awesome. Like, that's fucking impressive. That's not something just anyone can do. That's not something I can do. That's why I'm on YouTube talking about this shit instead of doing it myself. I mean, I could have gone to school for it. I mean, I, I was pretty good at illustrating. But I don't know how to animate. Animation is hard. And the people who do it deserve to be compensated for it. And I've already pledged my support for the Animation Guild, but so can you. You don't need to be a member, and by signing the petition that I can pull up in a second... You can send a message to the entertainment industry that you stand with the hardworking and passionate people who make the animated media you love. Because it's time for a new deal for animation. And let me just find... I... This was kind of impromptu. I'm just kind of winging it this week, so I need to find it real quick. Is this it? Here it is. Okay. I'm going to drop this in the chat real quick. So if you haven't already, you can go and sign that. To show your support for... The animation union i'm using my platform of two viewers for that because i care about this shit okay i also wanted to talk about what i've been watching this week so last week i talked to sky a little bit about euphoria yeah i'm just in, I'm, I'm just drinking from an empty glass i talked to sky a little bit about euphoria i said that i haven't watched season two yet so, uh, I watched season two this week, and I decided that I liked that season a lot more than season one. And the reason why is because they were just like, you know what? Season one, we kind of tried to make, like, this gritty commentary about, like, oh my god, this is what it's like to deal with addiction. This is what drug acts go through. Like, this is why you shouldn't do drugs, because, like, here's this, like, dark depiction of, like, doing drugs and all this shit. Oh, dang, I already signed this one? Yeah, I did too. But for the people who haven't, I want to put it out there. They kind of moved away from being like the... Doing that gritty, like, this is what it's like to be addicted to drugs. Because I, I think the thing is, is the, fact, the fact that season one was both this telling of the dangers of being an addict, the dangers of doing these hard drugs, and also like a teen drama. I think the dramatization of one and like trying to go realistic with the other didn't really work well because like i'm gonna be real dude some of the people who watch euphoria are the same kids who on twitter just found out the leak was a lean was 
yeah, League of Legends is a drug. Who just found out lean is a drug last month. Like, they just found out. They were like, oh my god, dude, lean is drugs? Like, those, that's the target audience. Those are people who are watching Euphoria. Should they be watching Euphoria? I don't know. Probably not. There's a lot of weird full frontal nudity that probably doesn't need to happen, but I, I digress. Lean of Legends is a drug. Lean of Le Legends is drugs. Um, my main thing with that, the main thing with like the way that they portray drug use in Euphoria is like, I don't know any high schoolers who are doing fentanyl. I'm not going to deny that there are probably high schools who do fentanyl, but also I think the fact that like they do explainers on like what a dick pic means, but they can't do an explainer on what fentanyl is when fentanyl is like actually a really dangerous drug. Like, okay, whatever, show you doing heroin, show Rue doing heroin, show her doing Oxycontin, show her doing all that. Also, what fucking high schooler can get, Ox bro, honestly, all right, I gotta roast this show for a second. The fact in the first se first episode of season two, that girl gets in the car with Rue and she starts doing heroin, and heroin's like, oh, <laughs> heroin, Rue's like, oh my god, you're doing heroin? Bitch, you doing Oxycontin. What do, what do you think heroin is? Like, I'm sorry, you bougie motherfucker. The fact that you were, you come from a privileged home where you can afford Oxycontin like it's just a regular thing. Like, most working class motherfuckers gotta do fucking heroin because Oxycontin's expensive. Yeah, man, fentanyl killed a few friends. And, yes, dude, fentanyl is literally like, dude, if you do it once, you're probably gonna die. Like, that's one of the few drugs where it's like, you know, you go to dare and they're like, if you smoke, you're going to die. If you do weed, you're going to die, which no, you're not. If you do crack, you're going to die, which maybe you will. If you do heroin, you're going to die. If you do fentanyl, yeah, you're probably going to die. Like, that's like the easiest way to overdose. Like, and here's the thing. Like, why, why did, why do they do an explainer on like every little thing except for like the things that actually matter? Like, yeah, let's do an explainer on sending nudes as a teenage girl. Like, sure, I'm there's certainly a conversation to be had there but it's also like it's important <laughs> to some degree it is kind of weird how our child porn laws affect minors in the way that they do instead of like targeting the weirdos who are actually like you know the reason why child porn is illegal in the first place and criminalized in the first place you know but instead you're going after teenagers who have their own nudes on their phone that's kind of weird but like you can't do that for fentanyl like like i'm saying a lot of the kids who are watching Euphoria on Twitter are the same people who just found out lean was a drug. Do you think they know what fentanyl... I didn't even know what fentanyl was until a couple of years ago when I started seeing all this stuff about people dying of it. And fentanyl is basically, for anyone who doesn't know, it's a very... It's a relatively cheap but very potent drug that is used basically as a filler to lace lower purity drugs. Because if you're a drug dealer and you got some shit that's not going to do much... Basically, the, the more, the higher purity your drugs are that you're selling, the more you can sell them for, and the easier they are to sell. So if you got some shit that's kind of, you know, not that high purity, it's not that potent, if you put some fentanyl in it, they aren't going to know the difference. They're just going to know they got fucked off, they, they got fucked up off it. So, like, that's what they do. And then you end up with this whole situation that is currently going on where a bunch of people start getting those drugs where they're getting laced with uh, fentanyl to make up for the facts that they're lower purity, and then they overdose, and then they die. And that's basically what fentanyl is for most of the time. And euphoria is like, yeah, we just do it straight up. Also, like, they do drugs. Like, everybody does drugs in the most dangerous way possible. Like, why are you showing high school girls to do molly by snorting it? Like, that's the most dangerous way to do molly. Bro, it's a pill. Just take it. Like... Homie, that's, that's what pills are for. You don't have to snort a pill. Like, that's, like, the most dangerous way to do it. I mean, that, that part of it, I feel like they took a step back from in Season 2. Like, they weren't trying to be like, yo, we're trying to educate t kids about drugs. Because, like, they kind of figured out, like, oh, yeah, we're not doing a very good job of that. Like, and they were just like, you know what, fuck it, dude. This is just Breaking Bad. We're just going to go crazy. Sounds like one of those shows where heroin users start with a needle. I mean, that's the thing, though. It's like, Rue was just doing straight-up Oxycontin. Like, bro, you bougie-ass bitch, bro. This is not the conversation where I need to, like, be sniffing. But, yeah, you bougie-ass bitch, bro. What the fuck? You doing Oxycontin? Like, homie, like, 
do you do you realize like I just gotten this shit where people get addicted, and then they're like, ah, fuck, now I gotta do, start doing heroin. But she's just like, oh yeah, I'm an addict, but I'm I'm still gonna do the bougie stuff, bro. Like, make no mistake. Like, bro, are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, and then she has the nerve to judge a girl who's doing heroin. Like, bro, like, bro, if you've done fentanyl raw, I feel like you do not have the right to judge anyone for like, yo, dude, you going, you're crazy, bro. You're doing heroin. Like, dude, you were just, you fucking take straight fentanyl. Homie, what, you do not, that's like being like, damn, bro, you're doing fireball? Like, homie, you just drank hand sanitizer. What the fuck are you talking about? You know what I mean? Like, ew, gross. I would never do fireball. That's trashy. <laughs> Anyways, the signers are going into the Hall of Fame. Hell yeah, bro. Also, like, every character is toxic except for Fez. And I don't think that's a hot take. I think everyone has taken that, has had that, that impression of the show. And the reason why Fez is likable. The main reason is because he's the only one who is actually, like, attached to the real world in some sh in some sort of way. Like, bro, honestly, it was so refreshing when Fez, when they were leaving, uh, I don't even remember her name's hat. The, the fucking school teacher turned drug dealer, like, drug boss, whatever. They were leaving her house after the first episode, after, like, her fucking, her stooges, her pirate crew were like, alright, everybody strip down. Gotta make sure no one's wearing a wire. And after that, like, Rue was like, oh my god, that was so crazy. I can't believe that. And Fez was like, bro, why are you acting like that was, like, a cool thing? Like, why are you acting like that? Like, bro, like, we could have died. Like, why the fuck are you... Like, you're, you're doing, like, fucking trauma tourism type shit, you know? Like, homie, this shit is, like, not fun. It's not like a game. Like, we could have actually died. And you know what? That's the type of energy Fez has through a whole show, and that's why people like him. Because he's the only motherfucker who isn't living in this weird fantasy world. Because all these characters are in their fucking weird, toxic, fucking bullshit, where they're like, everyone in the world is fucked up but me. Like, I'm fucked up, but I'm justified in being fucked up, because, I don't know, X, Y, or Z. But I did appreciate the whole ending where, like, Lexi... The end of the season where Lexi was, like, doing her play, and, like, we got to see... A different perspective as far as like you know because they, they kind of straight up said like Rue is not the most relate reliable narrator and then they were like here's Lexi's perspective of, of everything and that's like okay now you kind of see and, and like that's kind of part of the reason why like some of her uh, classmates and stuff or some of the people in the play got like upset was because they're living in their own world where everything is justified and then they got to see an outside perspective and they're like okay what the fuck like y'all are judging me for being crazy like y'all are judging me for a shit that i am low-key like you low-key deserve to judge me for and then like with rue they actually did something really well where i felt like with rue they actually um because when you're in the state of mind where you're just like fucking up and you can't really control it you feel like every little thing that you do wrong is actually like it's just the end of the world like, you feel like every mistake you make is just ruining everyone else's life. And I think seeing from another perspective, like, someone give a more balanced, not black and white take on Rue's effect on their life really helped her. And I thought that was kind of cool, because it's like, she got to see, like, okay, yeah, no, like, I've been kind of a bad friend to this person, but also, like, here's a story where she's talking about some of the positive things that I've done for her. Like, some of the positive impact I've had on her life. And I thought that was cool to see. And also, one last thing I want to talk about. Why is there no hot couch guy? When doing drugs at that young of an age, there has to be a hot couch guy. There has to be, like, that libertarian, like, high school, or not even high school, but, like, that libertarian, like, 20-something-year-old dude who lives in, like, a rundown, like, apartment or, like, basement. And there's just, like, a hot couch and yes, I did steal this from Chapo. I, I told it, I stole this from Chapo Trap House. But like, it's the most like accurate description. And like, realistically, it's like, in my experience, it's usually been like someone's garage. And it's not even like a, ho a hot couch where like it's like that lever, like Ashley furniture, like that black lever that's like just gets super hot in the sun. Like, there's just like an open window nearby and it just gets super hot. I don't know. It's just always been like ratty ass couches that look like they just. They didn't even go to Ashley Furniture. They were just driving down the road one day, and they, they were like, hey, look at that. There's a couch. Like, just outside someone's house. Like, they threw it out. 
And they're like, ah, oh, this is gonna look great in the fucking, you know, and they just like take it home. They put it in the fucking garage or whatever. There was no guy like that. Where's the guy like that? The closest to that is like Fez, because he's like, you know, in his twenties stealing drugs to kids, but it's not even like I feel like that's like a big thing missing. Wait, what? Wait, wait, what? Wait, what? Hold up, hold up, what? Wait a minute. This is some breaking news right here. This is some breaking news. Where's where's my cursor? Bro, what? Dead ass? I obviously didn't watch Rampage because I was here doing the show, but goddamn. Alright. Okay. That's crazy. That's crazy. Oh, yeah, also, um, since we're gonna have a bit of a, a bigger guest this week, I think I'll do the W of the Week now. The W of the Week is, uh, Bruce joining OTK. Again, we're going back to Season 1, where just every, every member who, every person who joins OTK... I'm just going to give them the W of the week, I guess. I don't know. That's just like, that's the W until, uh, <laughs> until they sign me to OTK. All right. Do y'all want to see Tom Holland? Do y'all want to bring Tom Holland on here? Is, is, is it time for Tom Holland? Is it that time? All right. Hold on. All right, y'all. The moment you've all been waiting for. It's time to bring on the man, the myth, the legend. It's time to bring in Tom Holland. If he answers. Is Tom Holland going to answer? Do we need to summon him? I think we need to summon him. Yo, is that Tom Holland? Yo, it's me, Tom Cruise. Ah, fuck, we need Tom Holland. Oh yeah, it's me, Tom Holland. Yo, shit. Yo, why do you sound like you're from Queens? Is that like method acting? Oh yeah, you know, I was just doing an interview for Spider-Man. Yo, wait, you're Spider-Man? I think so. Wait, I thought that was Tobey Maguire. Yo, it's me, Andrew Garfield. Yo, wait, hold on. Like, I... You, you just le- messaged me off, like, a burner account. How do we know it's actually Tom Holland? Yeah, you know. <laughs> it's me, Tom Holland. <laughs> Yo, so, like, what... Are, are are you British, or, like, what are you, anyways? I'm Tom Holland, man. Wait, aren't you black? No, I'm Tom Holland. How do you feel about Ukraine? You know. <laughs> they got what they deserved. <laughs> okay. Yo, how do you feel about uh, George Floyd? You know. I'm Tom Holland. Okay, if you were Spider-Man in real life, what was the first thing you would do? Oh, shit. That's a good question. You would shit? No, 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 no. If I was Spider-Man in real life, I am Spider-Man in real life. I thought Spider-Man in real life was black. No, nah, that's what they want you to think. The real moral of the story is that only white men can solve street-level socioeconomic <laughs> problems. And that's why I'm here. Yo, is that that's the line? That's why I'm Tom Holland. Is that the line you use on Zendaya? Who's Zendaya? You don't know Zendaya? Oh yeah, I'm Tom Holland. <laughs> How? What is your opinion on minorities? Eh, you know. I think they have the right to exist. <laughs> Sometimes I'll sit next to one if they don't bother me too much. <laughs> Yo, do you say thank you when you go to Starbucks? Oh no, 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 no. You don't wanna you don't wanna give them a big head. Do you ever tip at Starbucks? Oh, what is that? When you throw like a couple pennies into the jar? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I All do right. that once a month or so. God, you're you're such a great guy, Tom Holland. You know, I've never said anything bad about you, by the way. Oh, Aren't you Tom, too? Yeah. Are you Tom Holland? Uh, for this interview, sure. No, I'm Tom Holland. (laughs) Well, I'm Tom Holland, and you're Tom Holland. And who else is Tom Holland? Hello? Tom Holland? Hey. Hey, I'm Tom Holland. Wait, you're not... Wait, who are you? I'm Tom Holland. Are you Tony McGuire? What? No, I'm Tom Holland. You called for me just now, did you not? Wait, there was another guy in here a minute ago. Wait, who? Oh, that might be my long lost twin brother, Tom Holland. <laughs> Yo. Are you Tom Holland too? I think he just told me your name's Tom. Are you Tom Holland? Yeah. I mean, I guess uh, I'm Tom Holland. Yo. Uh, wow, there's more Tom Hollands than just me and my twin brother? Damn, Wh- I didn't know that. Yo, wait. Which, which Tom Holland has a British accent? Because, like, 
I thought you were British. Oh, I think you might be thinking of our third twin brother. It's his name's actually Timothy Hollandy. <laughs> Have you heard of him? That that's the one with the British accent. Isn't Holland Other... like a? Hmm? Isn't Holland like a, a sauce that you put on eggs or something? Holland? I thought Holland was a country. I thought Holland was like uh, Hollandaise sauce. It's like basically like fancy mayo. Like, is this uh, fancy mayo used to put in your hair? Yeah, I think so. Is that how you got your hair to look the way it does now? <laughs> hey, I'm Tom Holland. <laughs> never heard of. Uh, I've never put mayo in my hair, but you know, there, there's always a first for everything. Yo, how come in my notes it says that you tweeted out that uh you need to preserve the white race? Hello? I mean, is that not what all Tom Hollands do? Then why are you dating Zendaya? Zendaya? Who's Zendaya? Your girlfriend? Wait, I have a girlfriend? I don't know, I think she was... I think she left you for Andrew Garfield or something. No, 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 no. I think you're talking about, uh, you're thinking of Tom Holland. You see, I'm Tom Holland, but you're thinking of Tom, Tom Holland. (laughs) That's a Tom Holland who's dating Zendaya. So are you British or not? No, I'm Mexican, man. <laughs> no, I'm a Mexican Tom Holland. Wait. You want some tacos and beans? I, I put some beans on my tortilla and eat it with queso and, and put some beans in there, eh? I thought that you eat beans on toast. No, 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 no. Those are the English people. I put mayo on my tortillas and put beans on them. Wait, so which Tom Holland is the British Tom Holland? Yo, welcome, Jay Epicenter. Tom Holland. How many Tom Hollands are there? Uh, from what I know of, there's only three. It's me, my twin brother Tom Holland, and my other twin brother Tom Holland. Have you heard of Tom Holland? Wait, so you're Tom Holland. The other guy is Tom Holland. Yes. I'm Tom Holland. I'm not sure about you, but sure. We can go with that if you want to believe. I don't know if I'm Tom Holland. All I know is, I could have been Spider-Man, but you're Spider-Man. What's that about? Oh, would you look at that? It's Tom Holland. All right, I'll leave you to him. I'll be back in a little bit. Yo, which Tom Holland is this? I'm Tom 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 Holland the third. Yo, what the fuck is what what the fuck is this shit, bro? I was supposed to be Spider Man. That's why uh, I want to know. You know the story goes, right? How come you're Spider Man but I'm not Spider Man? The the real Tom Holland was taking a taxi over to the studio to audition, and then Tom Tom Holland drove a car bomb into that taxi killing the real tom holland and then tom 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 holland the third which is me i just happened to be riding my bike down the street i saw the explosion i ran into shelter trying to get away from it that just happened to be the studio where they were casting the new spider-man and they saw me they said now that's an Aryan king and they mm-hmm. gave me the role didn't even have to audition how do you feel about islam well you see these people <laughs> Hold on, wait, our, our connection. We lost connection. Hold on, there seems to be multiple Tom Hollands from my un- un- understanding. Can we get the real Tom Holland in here? I want the Tom Holland that everyone knows. Can we get Can we get the European that's, one? Yo. That's why Israel <laughs> is a necessary state in the world. Thank yeah. you for coming to my TED Talk. Thank Yo. you for coming to Tom Talk. Hillary Clinton, what the fuck? Yo, where's where's the where's the the real Tom Holland? Where's the Tom Holland that does the Tom Holland stuff? That's me. I'm Spider Man. I'm Drake and Josh or Nathan Jones or Nathan <laughs> wait, Fiora, whatever wait. the new movie is with Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> wait, you're Drake from Drake and Josh and Mark Wahlberg. I'm also Rick and Morty. Hey, I'm Tom Holland. I heard you wanted the Hombre Araña. I can go pew pew, the telaraña, you know? You, you like spider webs? Telaraña, pew pew pew, this, I shoot those out of I think this is an episode of Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty? Who's Rick and who's Morty? Yo, Never where? Of... How, how many Tom Hollands? How many Tom Hollands could a Tom Holland Holland if a Tom Holland was with Obama? Well, according to the SJW media, Tom Holland can do anything, so the answer to that question is obviously three. You see, Tom Holland is brave. 
How do you feel like the... Tom Holland is beautiful? Tom Holland dates Zendaya. Yo. Tom Holland hates Zendaya. Tom Holland isn't scared to be seen with Zendaya. Tom Holland is the best misogynist in the world. Tom Holland is my brother. I am Tom Holland. Yo, can we get another Tom Holland in here? Tom Holland? Who's Tom Holland? I don't know a Tom Holland. I thought you were Tom Holland. Oh yeah, I am Tom Holland. I don't think any of y'all are the real Tom Holland. No, 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 no. <laughs> do I not sound Caucasian to you? Do I not sound like Tom Holland? What is this bullshit? What do you mean I don't sound like Tom Holland? Bruh. Look, I, I can sound like Tom Holland. Look, look, look. Briskets. <laughs> Beans on toast. Yes. You see? Tom Holland's in the flesh. Well, not in the flesh, but you know what I mean. All right, Tom Holland, tell me, what is what is Robert Downey Jr. What is Robert Downey Jr. like in real life? Oh, you mean Roberto Downey Jr.? <laughs> oh, he I likes calling know. the cops on homeless people. <laughs> that is true. That is true. I've seen him do it three times. I learned from him. <laughs> and then two of those times out of those three were for my family. He thought they were homeless, but they weren't. They just dressed like homeless people. Why did he assume your family was homeless people? You see, I'm Tom Holland. That's why he just assumes I'm poor. Haven't you seen Spider-Man? I'm poor. I'm basically <laughs> poor. Look, I can barely afford to live. Do you not see me deliver pizzas? I don't know, I man. Tom Holland I, s- I see you on these red carpets wearing all these designer Gucci clothes and whatever the hell. No, you see, that's all fake. Listen, that's, I... That's, I- I saw one of your jackets, the jackets that you wore on the red carpet, and it was like $200, and I was like, no way. Oh, no, 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 no. My friend, you're confusing me for Tom Holland. I am not Tom Holland. I am Tom Holland. All right, where's the Tom Holland with the expensive jacket, then? Oh, Oh, that's me. I stole it from Robert Downey Jr. (laughs) Yeah, that's Tom Holland. He steals everything. I mean, I guess he is pretty short. I'm poor, and he stole my life. And now he I says stole your girl Zendaya too, didn't I, you bald little bitch? <laughs> See you in hell. That wasn't my girl. I don't know I'll what he's back. talking about. Give me two seconds, I got to go whoop Tom Holland's ass. I'll be back. <laughs> they all left. I don't think this is... I think I got scammed, bro. Bro, who the fuck did I Venmo $10,000 to? That's what I want to know. I knew that was kind of cheap for a, cheap, a speaking fee. Obviously, y'all know I'm a millionaire. So, like, I mean... Obviously, I'm a millionaire, bro. Look at... Hey, yo, it's me. I got your $10,000, your girlfriend, your acting <laughs> career, and your hair. Yeah, well, no one remembers who the fuck you are. I'm Tom Holland. <laughs> yo, does anybody remember who Tom Holland is? Wait, yo, I'm Tom Holland? Yo, wait, how many people saw that one, uh... What, that, that one, uh, that one movie that you were in? I don't even remember the name of it. Nathan yeah, Drake? Yeah, you know. No, no, no. Nate, Nate, Nathan's Hot Dogs. I worked at the stand. Did you have to work at the stand because no one saw that movie? Yeah, you know, it's hard. What is your biggest accomplishment in life? Would you say? Uh, Man, you know, I want to say it's the money, it's the fame, it's the Academy Awards. But in reality, it's just knowing that I'm better than every minority in the world. (laughs) Well, y'all heard it here first. This is Tom Holland Uncensored. I uh, you gonna send me the rest of that ten thousand or what? Honestly, I think you should send me ten k. Uh... I mean, bro, we got eight viewers in here. That's more people than saw the fucking Uncharted movie. Wait, what's Uncharted? I don't know. You were in a movie for it. Wait, hold on. I gotta check Tom Holland's Wikipedia. <laughs> Listen here, Tom Holland. I'm gonna whoop your fucking ass. I hope you know that. Bro, why are there two Tom Hollands? See, I'm no, whoop. we're one person. Okay, how many people do I need to send 10k to? Listen here, Tom Holland. If you keep talking, I'm gonna take that shirt too, you know? And I'm gonna show your nipples. You're gonna get banned. Hey, yo. Too late. <laughs> Damn it. Alright. We need another... Hey, what? Tom Holland's a bum, bro. He doesn't, like... He doesn't even have a filmography section on Wikipedia. <laughs> Wait, 
Why are you speaking in the third person? Oh, I, this, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. That's just, Tom that's just, just Tom no. Holland, are you dead? No, no, no. What's going on? That's, Tom Holland, that's did you just, hit yourself on the head? What happened? Did Spider-Man mess you up? No, 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 that's just a trick I learned from my homie Dwayne, you know? He used to speak in the third person. The, the Rock says. The Rock says. Oh, are you thinking about the Dwayne? The Dwayne, yeah. Yeah, the Dwayne. Ah, uh, yes. The Tom Holland. The Tom right, Holland. Look, I was in, dropped you on your head. I was in America, Avengers, Civil War, America, Spider-Man, Homecoming, wait, America, wait, America, Infinity War, Civil War? I was America, Endgame, War. America, Home, <laughs> America, No Way Home. How do you feel about America? Oh, right here, Uncharted. You know, I think they deserve 11 but <laughs> I think someone beat you to that I think CVS is the better retail store anyways so that's why they're here there I think Walgreens is better oh no I think 9-11 is better <laughs> You mean 7 Eleven? And he's gone. Alright, um. I'm not sending 10k unless we get to at least a certain mark. Also, I'm hearing about a third Tom. Am I a third Tom Holland? Like, what's going on with that? Like, what. What was the third Tom Holland? I want to see the third Tom. I want to see more Tom Hollands. I feel like I'm not getting my money's worth. I feel like, bro, honestly, dude, do you know how many rug pull scams I had to pull on alt accounts to get that 10k? I'm just kidding. I, I have no idea. Bro, how the fuck would that even work? In theory, how would that work? How would I How would I do an alt? I would have to have more followers on my alt account than to do a rug pull. Bro, what if I just had an alt account with like 50,000 followers? And it's also like a conservative one. You know what, man? You know what? Fuck it, I'm saying it. No Way Home was overrated. Y'all put three white men together. And what do you get? A movie. I mean, let's let's be honest. Let's be honest. Let's be real. Let's be honest. Tom Holland. Hey, yo. No, no Way Home was overrated? Huh? Yeah, bro. Y'all just got three white men together, and y'all just were like, hey, yo. Oh, white men? White men? I think it's time to introduce you to Black Tom Holland. <laughs> yo, you need to respect Tom Holland, the Black Tom Holland. The real Tom Holland that got Zendaya. And you couldn't have her. Y'all think I'm dumb? That's not Tom Holland, that's Justin Trudeau. <laughs> Justin Trudeau? What? Yeah, how, how dare you disrespect a Black Tom Holland? <laughs> They called me Justin Trudeau. That, that tried to dress up <laughs> like, Tom Holland, like a black Tom Holland. You need to show some respect. That's just... I'm a man who got Zendaya. Hey man, I saw that last debate where you came out in blackface and you were like, Hey yo guys, look, I'm Tom Holland. Hey, that's how you get Zendaya. You know she likes the brothers. It's apparently how you win elections as well. Yeah man, that's the people man. They want black people. Like, That's the new wave. What about in Quebec? If you were black, you would have Zendaya. I don't know. If, I don't know if that's that's how it would work. Listen, if I what, what is that dub so Euphoria? I bet you there's a bunch <laughs> of black people on that show. Not really. It's actually pretty white. Damn. It's it's a Gee, pretty. That's how messed up it is. Wait, so in America. If, if you're the one who got with Zendaya, then how come I always see Zendaya out with a white Tom Holland? <laughs> I just didn't oh, have my me. black face on. I'm his cover. <laughs> Yeah, he's not my cover. His he cover so properly. So people think Tom Holland is white instead of black. Yeah, yeah you know, know how the racists are. Publicity. <laughs> Don't We're you for Marvel? You know how Marvel. You know, like you know how they do the posters. I wouldn't be on the posters. They would like they would do me like they did the Star Wars kid. You know how it is. Is that why we ain't got Miles Morales yet? Yeah, you see, Bro, you know, you know how it long, is. they're gonna make Miles Morales white. Wait, couldn't they just use the black Tom Holland for Miles Morales? So Tom Holland 
gets two checks. No, 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 no. We don't. They don't <laughs> look. It's Marvel, man. He's gonna be a white passing like Puerto Rican. Multiverse like that. Hey, yo, you know my friend Sammy? Sammy Zane. Or you know Sammy my friend Sosa? Sammy, Sammy G. Yeah, Sammy Sosa. <laughs> Sammy, yeah, what about him? Just like Michael Jackson, man. <laughs> Every brother knows what he needs to do to make it in the business, and that's why he hired me as a stunt double. Are we sure that Tom Holland hasn't been black the whole time and he's just Sammy Sosa in it? Yeah, I told you. I am black Tom Holland, so I've always been black. I know you're Justin Trudeau. You can't lie to me. If he was Justin Trudeau, then this would be a very problematic segment for you. (laughs) Yeah, it is pretty problematic because I'm First Nation. Where are those? Where are yeah, the you missing know what women? The Canadians did. You know what the Canadians did to the First Nations? Yeah, I know Justin I Trudeau. <laughs> yeah, where where are the missing Indigenous <laughs> women? Listen, I don't have anything to do with Indigenous women. I'm Black Tom Holland, and the only woman I've interacted with is a Dame. You can't just put on blackface and pretend you don't have responsibilities, Justin Trudeau. <laughs> yes, I can. That's what I, you know, did you not see? Did you not oh, see come her? on. You you ever see any picture of Justin Trudeau giving a speech, and then you see all the pictures of Justin Trudeau in blackface, where does he look happier? Where does he look like his life is being fulfilled? He was born on this planet to stand next to those two Indian gentlemen and stick his tongue out. See, he knows how he does. He knows how to do things right. But that's not me. I'm not Trudeau. I'm Black Tal Holland. Sounds like what Justin Trudeau would say to avoid answering where those indigenous women are. Trudeau is just my, like, little brother. I respect him, though. How's he your little brother if you're the same person? I'm not. I'm, I'm black Tom Holland. I don't know what you don't understand. Yo, Tom Holland, how do you feel about Will Smith? I would have slapped his ass, too. Wait, no. Yeah, he was <laughs> I would have slapped... <laughs> you know, if, if Chris Rock had talked about Zendaya... I would have smacked him too. Honestly, so it would have been like an all a new multiverse of me slapping him. But since I'm white Tom Holland, if I heard him say anything bad about Zendaya, I'd ask him to continue. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the white Tom Holland can't do shit. But the black Tom Holland, he could just I could whip his ass. That's how it goes. I don't know what a native Tom Holland would be able to do though. That's a that's an interesting question. What do you think? What would you do for Zendaya? Honestly, ever since Edge won the Royal Rumble, I haven't cared about Zendaya anymore. Yeah, see, that you was knew. a poor, that was a, that was not a good sacrifice to make. Yeah, well, no, he just knew that once she went black, she wouldn't go back, and he was just like, "Black Tom Holland has her." I don't and he think was that like, was it. <laughs> <laughs> once she goes black, she won't go back. Once Tom Holland got her. Yeah. <laughs> no, but... no, but we're talking about the real Tom Holland, not the one you see on TV. Yeah. Yo, who else in Hollywood is secretly black? Uh, you know know the Queen of England? Yeah, you saw her that African, that African, what was that African thing she had? They thought she stole it, but it was truly hers. I don't really want to think about African things that the Queen has had in her lifetime. You know, several countries... (laughs) Couple hundred thousand uh, soldiers. Pretty sure she still has countries. Yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, she's on Hollywood this... though. No, she is. She does the. She's the uh, Meryl Streep. Yeah. Yo, where is where is British Tom Holland? Yeah, I don't know where that traitor is. I think I think. Oh, it's did the me. real Tom Holland go get him? British Tom Holland. <laughs> <laughs> That's the same dude doing there a British is. voice. There he is. Are you telling me this is a British accent? I mean, now it just sounds like Scottish. Listen, what is Scottish? He's British. He's British. Oh, I'm British. Oh, I'm British. There we go. Uh, I don't know any other words in British, so I'm just going to drop the accent. <laughs> I thought you were an actor. This is just next level method acting. It's not you're not doing a very good job if you can't keep the accent going. Let's see, you know some actors can't act. Oh, uh, I got COVID from <laughs> uh from uh you know, I was sitting next to that minority one time. It must have been 
Ah, oh, man. You know, the sacrifices I make for Black Tom Holland to have Zendaya, it's... <laughs> This is good for all of us. I get the woman, you guys get the fame. Who is you guys? I ain't got nothing. Oh, that I think I'm good now. Well, there is me, the black Tom Holland, and there's the other fake Tom Hollands. I don't know what's going on anymore. I got Justin Trudeau in here wearing blackface saying he's Tom Holland. I got Tom Holland who says he's Tom Holland doing a fake British accent. You know what? I'm going to have to go back to run by country. You're right. You got me. <laughs> Are you going to find those indigenous women? <laughs> well. Why the fuck was Justin Trudeau on my pot on my fucking broadcast? Who let Justin Trudeau out the house? Y'all know those Canadians. They're just like, yo, dude. Y'all remember that? Remember when Justin Trudeau was like, I have never done blackface in my life. And then they found a picture of him doing it. He was like, I've done blackface once and never again. And then they found more pictures and he was like, I don't know how many times I've done blackface, but I've done it too many times to know. I don't know if there are going to be more Tom Hollands anymore. I don't know what's going on here. Remember, kids, you too can get Tom Holland to come on your broadcast if you pay a random dude $10,000 and then Justin Trudeau might come on your broadcast too and say a bunch of problematic shit that's going to get you canceled. But that's fine. Because, I don't know. Have y'all subscribed to Suckmo Mail? Have y'all subscribed? Have y'all followed me on Twitter? Have y'all done all that shit? Have y'all filed your taxes? Because that, that deadline's coming up pretty quickly. Anyways... Everyone, thank Tom Holland for coming. Actually, you know what, man? Fuck Tom Holland. I, I'm, I'm tired of this, bro. I'm tired of this, bro. I can't believe Tom Holland coming on this show, making a joke out of it, talking shit. I can't believe it, bro. Man, first he takes my role as Spider-Man, then he takes Zendaya after I'm no longer interested in her. That's that's a very important factor in all this. I was no longer interested by the time he was with Zendaya. Let's just show that on the record. Put that down, put that down, put that down. He was, I was no longer interested by that point. I was praising the one OT9. By the time that happened, it was, it was on, it was on footage. Me saying that when the, the, the truth coming out, fuck Tom Holland. That homie is five, six or whatever the fuck he is. Short as fuck. I might be five, seven, but I'm a short king. That man's a manlet. I should be Spider-Man said. You know what? I, I should... Yo, Marvel, make a supervillain that is also Spider-Man. I'll be that supervillain. I'll beat up Tom Holland in the thing. And then... No one will remember who he is. You know what, bro? Make me Venom. I could play Venom. I could play Venom. Yo, wait, hold up. I could play Carnage. That makes sense. Tom Holland is Spider-Man. Tom Hardy is Venom. Tom Tobin is Carnage. Right there, right there, except they're all British and pretending to be American, and I'm not British. I'm I'm aggressively not British. I am an Irish native. Like, I'm Irish and Native American opposite of British. <laughs> I'm aggressively not British, so that might be an issue. But listen, dude, money, bro. Tom Holland, Tom Hardy, Tom Tobin, it's Carnage. Like, bro, Think about that. All all short, all below five nine. Why why not? Why not? Let's let's do it, bro. Let's let's go. Marvel, hit my line up. Just go on my Twitter. Wait, do I even have my Oh yeah, I do have my business email in there. But also I have I have a link to Sugma Mail, where in which I upload actually I don't even know what I'm gonna do for stream highlights. I might do I think I'm gonna be a little bit more selective about clips from the stream. I might post the other I might post more of the stream highlights on the other channel because i want to get as many people in here as possible and i think if i put the highlights on the other channel which has more subscribers that might get more people in here you know what i mean so that might might help that but also make sure you follow me on whatever i guess that's it for tom holland everyone you know what man man fuck tom holland bro you know what you know what There. 
There. You know what? Fuck it. I'm I'm deciding. I'm actually the superior Tom in all of this situation. I get get this out of here. Get this out of here. I don't want to see you around here no more. I'm not even just gonna close it. I'm gonna get rid of it entirely. I'm the real Tom. I'm the superior Tom. I don't care if you're Spider Man. I'm stronger than Spider Man. My power level is higher than that. I am fifty thousand years old. I don't know, dude. I should probably announce who the guest next week is going to be. Also, if you're not subscribed to the Roundtable, make sure you go and do that. Make sure you go and subscribe to the Roundtable. This is a little loud. Make sure you subscribe to Tommy PQM on, on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to Sugma Mail on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to the Roundtable on YouTube. Make sure you're, sub you're following Tommy PQM across all social media on here if you're not already, on Twitter, on Instagram, on I'm not on Tumblr anymore, because that was not worth it. But as always, my name has been Tom, I'm the Sugma Male, and this has been Late Night Sugma Program, and next week, we're doing Boys Night. Next week, Ricky HNL, and Huey, what is this tag you anymore? Is it Huey the Ho? I'm Huey Ho. Hi, I'm Huey Ho. Or hi, I'm Huey. Hi, I'm Huey. And Ricky HNL will be on for Boys Night next week. Good night, everyone. <laughs>